So welcome. This is a relatively new Q&A series that I'm doing live where I'm interviewing clients who are sharing the small shifts that are bringing the biggest abundance in their lives regarding work, money, and relationships. And the reason I'm doing this is both as an introduction to an opportunity that everyone will have to learn more about ways that you can do this in your life, but I really want to make sure that every interview gives something that you can take away, insights, tips, and next steps that are very relevant and you can begin applying into your own experience right away so that you can also make those small shifts that bring bigger abundance. So if you have questions throughout this interview, the last one ran about 30 minutes. Um, we're just gonna play it by ear. Please post those questions in the chat. After we're complete, uh, Robin and I will circle back and respond to your comments and your questions. So for today, I'd like to welcome Robin Noser. She is a wonderful client I've had the pleasure to work with for now. We were just talking about it 10 years. And I always like to say that I'm, I feel so blessed and honored that I have these long-term relationships with my clients. And it's not because they're not getting results, but because they are. We're always exploring the next upper limit. So um, Robin will have an opportunity to introduce herself. Welcome and thanks for being here. So thanks. glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I think we'll just jump right in. So um, let's see if there's any other business before or logistics. Okay, let's just jump in. So Robin, thanks for being here. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are calling in from, and maybe your purpose, passion, and profession for people to know? Sure. Um, so I'm Robin Noser. I live in Houston, Texas. So um, I'm 45, a mother of one 15-year-old daughter. Um, I am... Okay, so as my my career, I guess I'm a senior channel manager um, in cyber cybersecurity, and um, as far as my purpose, I'm not really. Uh, I feel like I, it's still being uh, revealed to me, right? I mean, I think that I'm I'm an advocate. I think that's probably in every area of my life. I do that professionally. I do it, you know, with um, volunteer work. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So you'll be sharing a little bit more about your work because I know it's it's mm -hmm. a very fulfilling thing that's come into your life in the last few years. Um, but I think before we get into that, what I'd like to do is start with my first main question, which is a way to frame this interview. So one of the very first small shifts that bring big abundance that I offer my clients is this point of view which is that there are two models of power. There's a doing model of power, which many accomplished professional women are very familiar with. It tends to be sort of um, operating with a lot of mental energy, taking a lot of action, much like the hunter. Mm -hmm. And then there's this being model of power that we tend to be less familiar with. So the doing model of power allows us to have tremendous success, but it doesn't always equate to fulfillment. And the being model of power offers the skills that does offer um, more in the realm of fulfillment. So with that as kind of our, our foundation for this interview, um, Robin, could you share with us what it's meant to you to explore and understand the difference between these two models of power? Well, I think um, the, the biggest, the biggest thing that I would, I would say is that I have um, always been such a control freak. And that's been one of the, the ways that I've I wouldn't say given up control because I don't know that control freaks always like completely just given up control, but definitely um, surrendered. You know, you you teach about like the flower versus the you know hunter type of um, uh, examples, and right. yeah, and so um, that has been that's been a big a, a big shift and a big um, kind of touchstone for me is is in that being versus doing. Yeah, that's a that's a great place to start because one of the things we talk a lot about is the difference between power and control. Mm -hmm. And so the hunter has a control orientation. So we approach our goals and our dreams in that way. And again, it can produce some tremendous results, but it isn't always fulfilling. It can be exhausting and it tends to be the kind of the place that we might hit a limit. So the flower, as you said, or the tree, Mm -hmm. It's a whole other way of approaching our success and fulfillment. 
So okay. thank you for that. Yeah. Um, could you describe a little bit, having embarked on that journey of exploring those two models of power, what are some of the small shifts that have made the biggest impact in your life? Um, I would say probably the biggest, well, gosh, I mean, I've had a whole, I've had massive shifts in every area of my life since I've been, you know, working with you and following this, the being versus doing. But I mean, I would say probably the biggest, the, the smallest shift, which was releasing control and surrendering um, that probably has produced one of the biggest outcomes in the, the last couple of years is regarding weight loss. So tell us more about that, because I know that's what I led with when I let people know about this interview. And I know that for people for, the, for whom that's uh, a goal that they have, mm -hmm. tell us more about how that unfolded for you. Well, so I was a compulsive dieter my whole life. I went on my first diet when I was nine years old. And it's, I mean, I've been on diets. I could write a book. I probably should write a book about <laughs> every single diet there is. Cause I have pretty much done them all, like literally all of them. And, um, when I stopped dieting and started in, and I remember you saying this to me years ago, which was, you know, some people do better with, you know, might do better with limited sugar. You know, you, you don't really know where you're going to end up. And I remember you saying you will probably end up intuitively. I feel like you'll probably end up one of those people that just kind of eats whatever they want, just doesn't eat a lot. And it's funny because I think you said that to me like eight years ago and it, that's exactly what happened. I mean, once I stopped dieting, I stopped getting on the scale as a compulsive weigher. Like I weighed myself every day, sometimes two to three times a day. Um, once I st stopped doing that and started listening to myself and, and it was hard at first, right? I mean, it's hard to kind of give up control, but it's harder to be miserable and, you know, think that a cupcake is like the antichrist. It's not, it's just a cupcake, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cupcake. It doesn't, I mean, it only has, it doesn't have any power. Right. And so, um, my, my relationship with food is what really changed. And so now I can eat a cupcake if I want a cupcake or I can just eat a bite or maybe I eat three. I mean, it doesn't, there's no, you know, judgment and shame and, um, and I lost 50 pounds and I do truly eat whatever I want, but it might be you know, the, the, the difference between a salad and a plate of nachos, sometimes I'm going to eat a plate of nachos because they're yeah. delicious, yeah. but sometimes a salad is really what my body wants. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, giving up that control has been liberating. I mean, the most liberating thing ever. And I'm, you know, 50 pounds lighter and it's great. Yeah. Well, I know that the outcomes are very important to people. And I know that that was like, woohoo, you know, for you. So I, I can imagine people, I can hear people through, <laughs> through the ethers going, yeah, but how do you give up control and how do you surrender? Because that's the last thing, anybody who is more oriented towards control, that's the last thing we want to do is give up control. So one of the things we talked about was it's not just about giving up control and surrendering because we'll feel like we're just exactly that losing control and falling through space so you actually started to replace control with something else and I remember talking to you like one of the things that we kept returning to was start to imagine that every time you want to diet mm -hmm. you don't really want to diet that's not what you want and getting control over your body that's actually just a symptom of something deeper mm -hmm. so that that's really about I want control because I feel out of control in some area of your life and that what's what that really is an opportunity is to look at that control, like saying, hey, Robin, what do you need? Yes. So tell us a little bit more about that shift, which is using the desire for control and shifting that towards something different. Yeah. So I still, because I still do have that, like, I mean, actually just this week I had the whole, like, maybe I should really cut back on carbs and, you know, um, 
not drink any wine at all and really cut back on my, you know, couple of nights a week where I have a few bites of ice cream, like maybe I should just really buckle down. And then I'm like, okay, so I know, I know that's a trigger for me, right? That, so, okay, where, where am I feeling out of control? Where am I really feeling out of control in my life? Right. Because it's not, that's where I typically always go first is like, let's buck, buck, buckle down the eating. Um, and so I, I think that you and I came up with like, um, like a, a red, yellow, green light kind of system that worked for me because I'm a, I'm a visual person and not so much, not as much of a words person. And so that was one of those like, okay, is this like a, like, is this like a red light? Like, okay, I've, you know, thrown out every carb in my entire house and, you mm -hmm. know, like I know something else is going on. And so I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, but I mean, that's, that was the biggest thing for me was like, oh, the diet's not about the diet. The diet's not about my body, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the having a glass of wine isn't about the wine. It's, there's something else underneath going on. And so really having to kind of dig in and go, okay, and sit with myself. And, and I do, um, my body responds really quickly to that. Like I can sit down and go, oh, okay, <clears throat> this is the, you know, nine-year-old, my inner nine-year-old that's like, hey, I need some attention. I need, you know, I need some nurturing. I need, right. I need something. There's a, there's a need here, you know, or, I mean, there, there have been times that I'm like, what, it, what is it? What am I feeling? Well, I'm really behind on emails at work or I'm, you know, I haven't done this presentation yet that's due. And I'm, um, it's, it's more about that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I really need to kind of dig in there. It's not because I need to go on a diet. Right. Yeah. yeah that's great. I like to say when you find yourself asking, what do I need to do? Which is, what do I need to do to feel in control? Or what do I need to do to lose weight? Or what do I need to do to like, you know, control something instead of what do I need to do? Ask and said, what do I need? Right. Yeah. What do I need? And so another way of looking at this is instead of trying to fix yourself as if there's something wrong and I need to get control so that I can feel okay or right or safe, we right. shift from fixing to nurturing ourselves. Yeah. And that's really, when you really got that concept, that shift, every, it, all it took was that one thing. Now it took a while to get there, but once you made that small shift and started to put it into practice, that's when everything changed for you with your body. Yeah, it really did. It really did. And it's interesting too, because I've even had to learn how to nurture myself. And that's something that I think we've worked on as well. It's like, you know, what is, okay, so what do I need? Do I need to, to, you know, sit with like a small stuffed animal? Do I need to um, go for a walk? Do I need to journal? Do I need to meditate? <clears throat> do I just need to listen to music? Do I need to yell? Like, that's been kind of yeah, helpful really as well. Mm -hmm. Really powerful. Yeah. And nurturing is a whole other thing. I would love to just illuminate because again, I can hear people asking some deeper questions. Um, so why is nurturing so powerful? Like how does that shift towards nurturing manifest big abundance? And so another really important kind of shift or small idea that produces big results is that we really stand on this idea that your consciousness creates your reality. Mm -hmm. So when you are giving lots of attention to what you don't want by trying to control it, right? What you're doing is your consciousness is saying, I'm broken, I'm not okay, I'm not enough, I need to fix myself. So everything that you manifest in your life is a reflection of that. Everything's going to show up as not enough, right? Whether it's your body or the other goals you have. But when you nurture yourself, you're telling life, I... I am worthy of receiving exactly as I am when I'm a hot mess, when I'm vulnerable, when I'm scared, when I have a need, when I don't know, you are receiving simply because you exist from yourself. And that consciousness is life. Life here is like, oh, so she just wants to receive just because she's the way she is right now. Well, let's give her more. And right. that self-nurturing was also a ripple effect for a lot of other things in your life as well. Yeah. 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 
a lot thank you for sharing that. So let's let's dive into that. So let's see. How about why don't you share with us a bit more about you've already talked about receiving more abundantly from yourself in terms of nurturing your needs. Is there anything else on an inner world that you've received more abundantly with these small shifts? Well, I mean, as far as yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just feel like I'm a total different person. So we could really be here all night. I mean, um, from an inner world too, I think, um, you know, I've learned and I'm, and it's, I'm still a work in progress, obviously. That's why I continue, will continue working with you probably till I, the, the day I die, um, <laughs> is, you know, I'm learning boundaries and, um, that was, you know, a big thing for me. I don't know if you want me to kind of, you know, chat about that, but yeah, one thing, that's that's a big thing for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe just one or a couple of things that are standing out for you about boundaries and and how that has made an impact for you. Well, and I think part of the reason that I've ever had boundaries is because I didn't trust my own voice. And so all I did was externalize, right? Um my uh, what I what I what what I needed or what I thought I needed or um, to other people, right? And so I just would ask other people or and their opinions were way more than more important than mine. And what they thought about me was so much more important than what I thought because I didn't trust my own voice. I mean, for a long time, I, I didn't even really hear my own voice. right. And so that, I think that that's been a massive that's change. That's mm -hmm. So how are, how are boundaries helping you with that? Um, with hearing my own voice yeah with hearing your own voice and and that piece about other people's opinions mattering more how's that showing up for you with boundaries well I think that it's it's been um really interesting because and really liberating because I'm like I don't I don't have to I don't feel like I have to I hate to say the words live for other people but I'm doing things for me now that that are you know, true to me and to my heart and what matters to me and to my purpose moving forward in life. You know what I mean? And so setting boundaries and 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 being able to learn them has been right. You know, I mean life changing. Yeah. I think what I've been witnessing in you is the the boundaries regarding this particular conversation is you're getting much more of a sense. And this started when you started to really nurture your needs, mm -hmm. much more of a sense of where you really begin and other people where you begin and end and other people begin and so this boundary between you and others rather than there being no boundary and it's like I need your opinion because I don't have a sense of my own value now right. there's this boundary like okay this is my space and mm -hmm. I occupy this space and I have a voice and I have needs and I have a feel feelings and and uh and I'm listening you know and I'm listening to that not just to what's outside of me Right. Is, you know, as opposed to like, I can't even hear my own voice. So there's a, there's a differentiation now between yourself and your opinion and your wants and your needs, which you've been nurturing and that of others. And you're yeah. really expanding into that. And, and the fact that it's okay. Like, I, I mean, I have it written down, like it's okay to have needs. That's, you know, that's been a big one. It's been, it's okay to want you can want what you want and that's okay. Yeah. You know, I have it on a sticky on my desk and it just says return to yourself. And I mean, it's like, I look at it a million times a day. Yeah. That's Cause that's what, well, that's what you told me to write down. And I did <laughs> <laughs> write this down, yeah. write this down. And I did on a sticky. And it's just right, there. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is great. If this is resonating for anyone who's watching, please, you know, say, yep, that, I get it. That resonates for me. And any, anything, any other questions or comments about this, if this speaks to you. So this is great. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. So why don't you tell us what else, what other abundance has been brought into your life in other areas in, on the material level, like the, the physical world results? Um, well, I mean, I've, I was able, I've got, my dream job, a job that I've wanted for years. I love my job. I love it. Like I, you know, I'm 45. So I feel like I still have what another 20 years to work, which is awesome. 
Um, which who gets to say that? I feel like most people wouldn't be like, yeah, I get another 20 years at this. And <laughs> I love it. You know, it's, it is, I mean, it's my dream job. And that was, um, something that I just thought, oh, that probably will never occur and will never happen. And so, um, I mean, I've made more money than I've ever made and I have more in savings. And I mean, it's just financially, my career, I mean, are amazing. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. And I really want to reemphasize because this whole series is about small shifts that bring big abundance. I, I would say that, you know, what I have witnessed was like really the place where it was almost like the domino fell, you know, and it was like everything else started to tip because you were working on this for a while, but really what um, it took was when you really got it about your needs are good and valuable, you know, and, and understanding that until I start to put my attention towards myself, as mm -hmm. opposed to, I have to make things happen. I have to get stuff. I have to achieve goals in order to feel better. This kind of outward motion is always coming from a place of lack because it's, I need that because I don't have it in here. Mm -hmm. So when you're, you know, wherever the, wherever your attention goes, the energy flows, if it's going out, all of the energy goes out away from you. But when it's coming towards you, life is directing energy and abundance, like that abundance of attention that you're giving yourself in a nurturing way towards you. So to me that it's a profound shift, but it's small because you're not, you're not working harder. You're not doing, it's a change in a point of view. It is. And you know, it's funny that you say that because I, I feel like I get more accomplished by doing a lot less, <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes I'm like, how did that happen? Like, you know, I mean, because there's an aspect of my job that sales. And so I'm like, how did that massive deal just material? You know what I mean? So it's, um, yeah. it is, I mean, there's, I think there's somebody that said, I don't know if it was a Dalai Lama that says, you know, if I'm busy, you know, I, I meditate two hours a day. And if I'm really busy, I meditate five or there's oh, some, that's great. I've never heard that. I love yeah, that. And, and that's, that's how I feel about what you just said. It's kind of one of those things like, yeah, the, the flower or the tree, you know, that it right. doesn't have to, to do anything, you know, a flower can just be, and the, you know, the, the bees come to it and the, and it really is, um, it seems so like there's no way that that would happen, but it is true. I mean, my life is 100% different. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I mean, physically, you know, um, emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> like financially, my career. I mean, it's totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love, I love what you shared about that. And that's, you know, which actually leads to my final question, <clears throat> which is, I really look at this, this, opportunity to shift our point of view in terms of rather than my powers and my productivity, how hard I work and how much I do, that your presence is more powerful in your productivity. But my passion is, you know, you hear a lot about presence, you hear about that with spiritual teachers. My passion is how does being, how does your presence actually translate to real world results, not just for yourself, Mm -hmm. But for the people you care about, for your capacity to have more energy to give, you know, in the way that you want to. And that's what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And I mean, I've noticed that even with, you know, my daughter, she's 15. And, you know, if anybody out there has teenagers, they're they're not always super fun <laughs> or easy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've noticed even, you know, with her, with a, with a, with a difference with her and my, my, um, going, okay, you know, with the control around her and, you know, cheerleading and grades. And as soon as I started really nurturing myself, our relationship shifted, you know? Wow. And so it's, I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's not just about, you know, being you say, and making lots of money, which everybody wants, but yeah. Um, you know, can you say a little bit more about just one thing about how your relationship with her has shifted since you started nurturing yourself? Yeah. Because that's, and to so many moms, what we do is we will give to our children at our own expense till there's nothing left. And we make them the priority because we think that 
taking care of ourselves is selfish. Yes. And so what shifted in your relationship with her? Well, well, everything I feel like has shifted, but the, surprisingly, again, she is a teenage girl. She's so much nicer to me, which is nice, right? I mean, I feel like she's, and, and she's so considerate of my feelings. And so, you know, I mean, which is, you know, it kind of was like an, oh yeah, I, I'm more considerate of my feelings. That's it. Right. I have boundaries for yeah. myself now. Right. And she has started doing that. Like she's even um, yesterday morning when she was like, thanks for making me breakfast. I was like, you're welcome. I mean, I just think I heated up some waffles in the microwave and was like really no big deal, but it was just so considerate. Like the, the things that she does now are so much more considerate. And I know that that's because I'm more considerate of myself. Right, right. And that's a great example of, you know, it isn't like do as I say, not as I do kind of a thing. Right. It's like, you are your presence and how you are being simply how you are being with yourself in yeah. her in her orbit your mm -hmm. example your energy your presence that's what she's that that's what's creating the ripple effect yeah yeah just like the tree it's just being there and it's impacting its entire ecosystem just by being it isn't going out and hunting to get stuff life provides yeah it's a, it's a receiving just by being so yeah I had, I had to ask about that because I know there's parents that are like oh what's happening there <laughs> so that's great. yeah and I feel like giving up you know not saying I'm not saying giving up control but really not making it all about me right like it has really shifted things too because then she's so much more willing to share and open up and her mm -hmm. grades have improved and it's I mean it's just I mean, it, I've seen it's just such a, a, a difference in her. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, as I kind of officially ask you the last question, um, again, I just want to invite people, to, if you, for those of you who are here live, please post your questions because we'll circle back. If you have any, um, we'll respond to those. So my last question for you, Robin, is what is standing out then for you about what's possible, what's become possible um, since really unlearning your over-reliance on doing Mm -hmm. and really exploring the power of being what's become possible well I think that that's like the the golden question is that because I mean now I know that everything is possible right because before I had this dream job that I'm like I'm never going to get I'm never going to lose weight I'm never going to respect you know my own feelings like I and knowing that everything has changed, that's kind of the question I, I'm asking all the time, like, what else is possible, right? Right. I mean, which is why I continue to work with you. Like, it's not, it's different than um, like a therapy where you're like, yep, nailed it, fixed all my problems, right? It's, <laughs> it's just this like, which I don't know, if anybody has that therapist and they I don't know that problems, that put it in the chat, right? But <laughs> right. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, the, um, I, I think that that's the biggest thing is that what else is possible, right? And, and I'm constantly like, yeah, okay, let's go deeper. Whereas before I was like, let's just stay on the surface. Let's not do anything deep. I don't want to have deep conversations. I don't want to get into feelings. I don't want to cry. I don't want to feel anything. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's go there because what else is what's what who am I going to be on the other side of this right yeah. right and and I think that that's been one of the most powerful things because I mean we've been working together for 10 years and I'm totally different than I was 10 years ago and I'm like who am I going to be in another 10 years right also you can never retire so right who's that Sonia you're never going to retire ever I don't plan to <laughs> good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. It's not like, okay, got the goal next. It's like, who am, who am I going to be on the other mm -hmm. side of this discovery process? Whatever's here right now today, I'm going to discover something. Who am I, I going to be? I love the way you phrase that because yeah. it is, it's all about being. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any questions, but I'll keep my eye open in case anyone does post some for Robin or myself. Um, but as we wrap up, first of all, Robin, thank you so much. This is 
Wonderful. You've been so generous and I know people are going to get some real good nuggets out of this. Um, For those of you who are interested in learning more about all of these things, the power of being, the power of doing, the the small shifts that bring the biggest abundance. Um, I'm teaching a masterclass. It's free. It's May 18th and it's called What If It Was Easy? Three Simple Steps to Stop Settling, Stop Waiting, and Get What You Want Now. And it is all about a three-step process, very simple method called the Receive Now Method, which uh, Robin has been practicing at length. And, um, and then this is how you can apply it to your life and truly stop the settling. Like I said, I can't lose weight. You know, I can't get the dream job to what else is possible and stop waiting, which is to really open the flow gates. Let's see. I think I saw something. No questions, still digesting. Okay. Thanks, Helena. So May 18th, the, um, doors are open for registration. It's free and it is what if it was easy class.com. So, Come on by. I think you'll get a lot out of the class. Let's see. Thanks for including me in this chat. Good to see you. All is well in my world and looks like it is in yours. Catherine, thanks for being here. What a nice surprise. Thanks, uh, Helena, Catherine. Um, And I think with that, we'll start to wrap it up. Oh, our next Q&A is Tuesday with Shannon Tran. She's uh, another client, a psychologist, a wonderful woman. I think you know each other. That's right. That's May 2nd. It's a Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I'd love to just leave everyone with this one thought, which is small shifts really can bring big abundance. So thank you, Robin. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.